Hello, welcome to this episode. This time I'm going to be trying the Canon EOS 10 QD with the uh, Yongo 50mm 1.8 and some Ferrania film. So this time there are several things I wanted to try. First, I wanted to try this camera. I finally wanted to try this camera because I purchased it a while ago and I also purchased the Yongo lens and I attached to it and it keeps sending me like errors, like error, error, error. It just, it just wasn't working and I couldn't figure out why was that. And then I finally figured it out. Uh, it, this lens actually works with this camera, but it only works wide open. So that's a bummer. Uh, you cannot stop the lens down. If you want to uh, make less light enter, you have to add some kind of filter to it, some neutral density filter. Uh, but right out of the box, it just communicates with the camera wide open. There were several experiments that I wanted to try with this camera. The first one was to see how the lens behaved. And the lens behaves well sometimes and not that well some other times. Well, for stutters, you cannot stop it down. That's what I already said. But aside from that, uh, I found that sometimes I was focusing on stuff that was like far away. It wasn't to infinity, like super far away, but it was far away. And I focused, the camera gave me the focusing, I just took the picture, but then when I saw it on the computer, um, yeah, it, it, it had some back focusing things, like it, it, it was focusing farther away than I thought it was, um, even though it was giving me like, a, like an out of focus confirmation. So I don't know what's up with that. The other thing that happens is that I was trying to see how fast it could focus. And even though it's not like, sluggishly slow, it's not really fast at all. Uh, I was trying to take pictures of people passing by on, on bikes, because it's Amsterdam, uh, and I was aiming at them, and then when they moved around, the, the, the focusing was just going back and forth, and it was just constantly missing it. And once I thought it had it, and when I took the picture and then I developed it, 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 it just focused on the background. So it's, it's not really a lens you would use at least I would use in this combo. It's, it's not something I would use for fast pacing action. It's more like calm portrait uh, in a controlled environment mostly. Or if you want to just walk around the city and take some time to take your pictures, this is a good combination. So the other thing I wanted to give it a try was the Ferrania film, the P30 film. I heard good stuff about it, not so good stuff about it. And the best way I know how to test things is just going out of the streets, take some pictures and see what happens. I was looking for situations that had high contrast uh, and to see how much uh, it will add to the shadows, if the shadows will actually be too dark or will I will be able to lift them. Like for example, when I shoot with uh, Tri-X, I know that I can lift the shadows and there's no problem because it's, it's not exactly a flat film, but you can recover a lot of the shadows. This particular film I developed it in D76 at stock, uh, full power for nine minutes. Uh, that's what the massive developing chart said I should do. And it works, it's super contrasty though. It's, it's very contrasty uh, and the shadows are not lost, but are not really easy to recover. Like if you put it on Lightroom, you can bump up the shadows, but some scenes I thought were okay or I could recover them later in post. I was like, okay, I'm going to give them a try and see how much I can pull them out later on. Um, and in reality, I couldn't. It was most of the information was done. So this is a high contrast film, in my opinion. I haven't tried several of these, so I can't give my uh, review about it. But for what I've seen on this combo, it's a high contrast film. It works okay, it's nice. So if you're looking for a really contrasty look, this might be a good option. We have no idea where we're going, so I'm just gonna stroll around Amsterdam. Oh, we're in Amsterdam, by the way. Uh, so we're gonna just stroll around Amsterdam and see if I can find some things. Um, nothing mind-boggling, but it's just to test this combo and see how it looks like. So I'm gonna stop talking and make this happen.
So that was the episode. Do I like this combo? Yes, I do like it, actually. I had high hopes because I quite like the Canon 50mm 1.8 the classic plastic fantastic even though there's now an stm version but i used to have the uh, 1.8 back in the days when i was started on canon and i really enjoyed that lens i thought it would be exactly like it but it's not it it doesn't communicate properly with the camera so that's a bummer aside from that the camera works really well i'm not such a big fan of the batteries it uses the two cr5 batteries they're not super expensive but they're not dear cheap either uh, and in my experience, they run out kind of fast, not super fast. I shot like, how many, like probably five rolls before they start running out. And it wasn't like a cold, terribly cold day or anything. It was just like a normal winter day. Um, so yeah, they drain kind of fast. The camera itself works really well. I, it, it was really nice to come back to this kind of cameras because I'm so used to manual cameras and manual operation and measuring light with a light meter and then transferring all the ratings into the camera. And this time I was just, just selecting what I wanted and just taking the pictures and that was it. It was so easy for me. It was so comfortable to take pictures with this. I barely ever or never used like aperture priority or shutter speed priority. But in this camera, I would just put it on 1.8 and tell the camera just like the shutter speed for me. And it worked most of the time pretty well. So yeah, for some odd reason, I felt incredibly comfortable using this camera. It's, it's not really heavy. It, the body is similar to the 5D, for example. It, it, it has more or less the same size. Please don't quote me on this thing because every time I say a body is similar to another body, every, there's somebody in the comment section say, you have no idea what you're talking about. But just, this is what I remember. I had a 5D and a 5D Mark II for several years. And I remember the size of the camera and it must be more or less the same. But this is more plastic, of course. And I don't know, it's, it's a light camera. I wasn't really scared of carrying around this camera without a strap, which is something I'm always reluctant to do. I, I don't like carrying around cameras without having them hanging on my neck or my shoulder. But since it's so light, the lens is really light and the camera is really light, it was just like, why not? It's just like carrying around a piece of plastic and having fun. Um, so it was really, fun to use. This is a really fun camera to use. I had a blast using this combo. Uh, I would suggest you not getting the Yongwo with this camera for the reasons that I've already mentioned. Maybe a 50mm 1.82 will be a better option. Or if you feel that you can just spend some money, get some 50mm 1.8 STM, or if you really feel like spending money, go for the 1.4, but I would suggest the STM version better. I haven't tried the flash yet, uh, but it should be working. Yeah, it is working. So yeah, why not? It's a great combo. It's a great camera. It's this, uh, I had forgotten how fun it was to shoot a DSLR because <laughs> I just saw my DSLR equipment so long ago that I haven't tried anything like it in years, probably five years or something. I, I forgot how fun it was to just walk around with a camera like this and just don't think about anything. It, it gave me a similar sensation to the Lomo LCA in the regard that it's a camera that I can just have around on my hands and just, I see something, boop, I take a picture and then I just keep going with my life. Uh, I don't have to constantly be composing and creating and putting so much effort into every picture. So I will say it's a great vacations camera. It's kind of on the big side though. It's a, it's a, it's not a huge camera, but it's a big camera. Like it's not, it's not something you could put in your pocket. So if you're looking for a camera to use your current Canon lenses with uh, on a film camera, I will highly recommend the 10 series. There, this is the 10 QD. There's also the 10. Uh, I know there's more cameras from Canon that can hold your lenses. There's the Rebel series. There's the LN7 series. There's a bunch of them. I have tried this one and I quite like it. I recommend it. It was super fun and it's light and all of those things combined. I think it's a, it's a great deal. I feel like I'm repeating myself when I say I have fun with this camera, but, but it's, it's true. Like it's not that common that I use one of these cameras uh, for the channel and I use it and then I feel like, oh man, I really want to purchase one for myself because I'm, I don't feel myself like I'm a camera collector, even though I have a bunch of them. Uh, 
but I don't feel like I have the urge to purchase more stuff constantly. But this camera really gave me the feeling of, oh, I would really like to have one of these Canons because they remind me of my 5D and I, I like the look of it. Um, I, I'm gonna show you some other pics that I've taken with this camera and some other films. I, I really like the outcome. Besides, even though the lens always shoot at 1.8 because of the small function it has with the body, the good thing is uh, if you use low ASA films, it works perfectly because this camera can shut up to one four thousandth of a second. That's a mind-blowingly fast speed. Maybe for you four thousandth of a second is not that much, but for me it's like super fast. So if you put like some I don't know, 25 ASA or 50 ASA film on these cameras, you're gonna have no problems taking pictures. I had zero problems walking around with this camera and some low speed film. Like it was, it was really fun. Uh, and I don't know, I, I cannot stress enough how fun it was and how much I recommend it. And I'll just stop repeating myself and I'll just go. This camera is going to one of my patrons and I'm super happy to give it away. The person who gets it is gonna have a blast. Um, and that's it. If you want to be part of the raffle that I do every month on Patreon in which I give away cameras and films and some other stuff, just join my Patreon. I'm constantly giving away stuff and just posting some other content and whatnot. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Thank you so much to all my patrons because you helped me to you know, just purchase some stuff and keep experimenting because this is what this channel is about. It's not about achieving perfection and the best results. It's just about trying new stuff and tell you my impressions about it. So I hope you had a great time. I had an amazing time. Uh, and yeah, I guess that's what counts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week with another episode. Until then, just keep shooting, guys.